Hey guys, it's Andrew here from Medbury Miniatures. I'm going to be starting a series of YouTube videos covering sculpting miniatures in ZBrush. I've not made any YouTube videos before, so this is going to be a bit of a learning curve, so just bear with me when the quality of these first couple of videos is just not quite up to scratch. I'll probably end up remaking them down the line um, as I learn more about ZBrush and making videos. So the first thing we're going to make is this Anglo-Saxon Huskull. I think this is a great model to start off because it would cover things like fur, chain mail, and different materials, as well as posing a figure and sculpting a figure proportionally for a 28mm miniature. So upon opening ZBrush for the first time, what you're going to see is this screen here. So we're going to get rid of the light box, so let's get rid of that, and load the standard UI because this is what you're going to see. So if you click with the right mouse button, we're going to see these red squares. Now this is useless to us, we're going to get rid of that. Um, so head over to the light box, project, default project. Now we can start sculpting here, but before we do that, we want to set two, uh, do a couple of things. So we need to set two hotkeys. So document, in, control, hold control, alt, click, and now zoom in. Control, alt, click, and zoom out. There we go, we've got our zooming in and out hotkeys. I already had those, but you probably won't. Come over to preferences next, load UI. I've added these in our Google Drive where I've put up the work from today and like the basic scenes and materials. I've also put it up these user interface. Make sure you download this because once we open this up, we've got all of the tools we'll need just down here on the left. I'll talk about these as we need them just to save time. And I'll quickly go over these brushes here. So standard brush, draws, hold alt, pushes away. If you hold shift, you bring up the smooth. There's nothing really for us to smooth right now. So hang on, let me just make some lines. Smooth, smooth it back out. So flatten is kind of in the name. Uh, Control Z will undo anything. Move, pulls things away. Hold Alt, pushes something in. Damp standard draws sharp lines. By default, it's on sub. So we've got add and sub. And so if you hold Alt, you'll get the opposite. You can do that even within the one stroke. This stuff up here we don't need to worry about. Intensity we'll use a lot because it's how strong a brush is. If you press S you'll bring up the size. So we've got draw and move. They're going to be our two biggest sort of tools that we're going to use up here. So if we press W we bring up the gizmo. The gizmo is how we're going to move stuff around in our scene. So let me just open up the floor so we can see. So we've got scaling on different axes, scaling in general, moving around in general, um, rotating from the point of view of the camera. All right, to get started, um, come up here to load tool, head over to where I've got um, the downloaded files for that I've got on the Google Drive. So base 16 with 25 millimeter base and reference. So that's the scene I've got open. So I've got, yeah, I've got our reference material, I found on the internet a ruler I've made and a base, a 25 millimeter base. So let's get straight to sculpting. So insert um, sphere 3D. Um, w or up here for move for the gizmo, scale it up or move it up, sorry, scale it down. Let's turn off perspective so that it's um, flat on this reference material. X for symmetry. All right, now let's start moving this into the rough shape of the person. So we're going to get all the way down to the hips and as wide as the shoulders. So just about here. Now we're going to do the, the front and we're going to do a bit of the glutes as well. So okay, move this back up, a bit of an arch in the lower back. That's quite a severe arch. And then some upper back. All right, so we need the chest to be a bit broader. Cool, um, let's now make that a bit deeper. So um, we're going to press this Dynamesh button to add topology. So beforehand our topology is a bit stretched out. Uh, leave the resolution as what it is probably because we just need the basic shape for now. We'll come back and edit this later and add the muscles but for now this is fine. So but 
actually while we're here let's go ahead and add this hole for the neck this is going to be handy to have especially when we come to the head and let's just um smooth that down because we actually let's no let's while we <laughs> let's add this and flatten down this chest there we go that'll help when we come to the arms cool so adding arms insert cylinder rotate on a bit of an angle stretch it out scale it down and kind of place it around here stretch it out but not to the hand so the hands about there so I'm gonna press Dynamesh straight away because a cylinder's topology is now stretched out that's not useful to us so Dynamesh now smooth because I kind of want that to be quite thin for now because we want to be able to add this sort of shape so the bicep for us is on the front of the arm at least for this T pose so if I turn on back face mask I can pull without affecting what's on the other side it's just going to make making this forearm thicker quite easy a uh, bit of a shoulder let's turn off the um, different color let's get and let's get rid of this one for now as well and let's get rid of that one and put that one back cool yep yeah. all right so we need the um, forearm to be a bit thicker and then we need the tricep and the bicep and the shoulder so let's go ahead up this resolution to yeah here we'll do and let's start sculpting some of the muscles um, we're going to make all of these look but I just need to block out where they are really really vaguely okay so if I hold shift and I click on an item I isolate it but so yeah I want to isolate this come on so the back of a tricep looks like a horseshoe just like this we need the elbow joint and a line going down we're gonna make the forearm a bit thicker there a bit thicker on this side I know this is quite crude at the moment we're just speeding through it because we just need basic shapes so the damp standard brush that's good for drawing lines kind of come through and add just around the bicep to here all right so this is another example where we're going to want to use this Dynamesh again, damp standard. So come through here. No, let's go again that way. All right, there's the bicep. Front delt. Side delt. And we want to stretch that a bit wider, I think. So back to the move. Let's just pull that a bit wider. Damp standard again. Through that way. Cool. And let's put the brachialis in and then the tricep there we go that's a very sort of characteristic uh, sorry cartoonish um muscular arm but that's just what we want for now let's now go to um zero measure because right now these polygons are kind of running a bit all over the place so zero measure half up because i don't want to drop it too much um, but it's a little bit denser than we need so let's drop this so now that's kind of made all of the um, polygons run and along the shape of the muscles they kind of wrap around the muscles in a much better way so now when I smooth it it's going to still keep the basic sort of shape of the muscles and when I come back and draw them later they're going to be there so turn the torso, the torso back on so obviously this shoulder's too big. We're going to drop that right now. Make this arm a bit thicker. There we go. Cool. But for our purposes at the moment, that's fine. So we've only got one. So we've got mirror, which swaps something side to side. This is one of those tools on the custom configuration. And mirror and weld. Now we have two arms. But our arms are dead straight. So let's... What we're going to do, make the brush about the size of the arm, hold down control to mask, mask the bottom arm, control click to invert. Now press to the move. Oh, why has it not done that? Sorry. Let me start that again with symmetry turned on. So X for symmetry, mask the lower half of the arm. And now we've got our move tool. We're going to put that on the elbow joint and just 
spin it forward. There we go. Now our arms are a little bit bent. Um, it just looks a little bit more natural, especially when we come and do the hands. So now we're back to the torso. We need to do the collarbone and the chest. So let's make that a little bit more realistic. So before we do that, I like to start with the rib cage. So damp standard on sub. Just put in a bit of a rib cage. Just helps me to find where the pecs are. Line up the pecs. And then across there. There we go. So roughly got some chest muscles in place. Cool. Now the muscles on the back, so the trapezius. That's so holding alt to invert because I've got it on add at the moment. There we go. Let's taper in that waist a bit. Cool. Zero mesh. Let's flatten this out a bit and push that back because we need that hole for the neck. Cool. All right. That's all right. Now legs. Very same process as the arms. So insert cylinder up here to move. Scale it down to roughly the size of a quad. Put it there. Actually, we'll, let's do the whole leg in one go, actually. Not, not the foot though. Same same thing again, that geometry stretch, just a dynamesh. So at the top, we're just going to smooth it all down, especially the bottom. We're going to make that as small as possible. So smooth, 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 smooth. Now let's come in and let's start shaping that. So we're going to go right up to the glutes with the legs. So let's bring that in for the knee joint. And again, tuck that in, make get the pointy calves. Cool. There we go, that's the shape of the leg from the front. Now from the side, obviously it looks nothing like that. So let's pull the calf back, that down. We need to make this ankle bone much smaller. We've kind of lost the calves there. So what this is, is about is just pulling things. Like, so when you draw and you've got your like perspectives and stuff, it's you only can see it from one angle. We're really lucky. We can move around an object and if something looks crooked and we can't work out what's wrong about this, just you can spin the camera and then just drag things around, which is something that's a little bit trickier to do with um, sculpting by hand. So it's just one of those things that makes sculpting digitally just not, su not superior per se, but um, I think just a lot more powerful in that we can go back and keep all of these histories saved. And another thing with ZBrush is every object has its own saves, um, sorry, backups, um, when you undo something and redo something. Unlike Blender, where when you make a change, it's to the whole scene. This is just to the specific object. So let's now just shape that loop. So it's at this point that we kind of stop looking at the reference material. That was just to give us the basic shape of a person. Um, notice I haven't spoken yet about proportion or scale. I'm gonna to get to that when we talk about the head. So I'm gonna bring these glutes out to the side because that's important to have, cool, mirror and weld. There we go, two legs. That's a bit of a thigh gap but we need a bit of a thigh cap at the moment because when we um, add clothes, so I'm just gonna take that waist in a bit further, give them a bit more of a narrow waist. Again, we're not, we're not sculpting the fat on this person because it, even if we wanna make a fat model, a fat fella, we need just to start with the muscles because you need the muscles to work out where the fat's gonna go. So back to the torso, let's get this looking better. So you bring that back out. So the underarm, so make the brush smaller with the move to a whole alt. We're just gonna shrink the underarms a little, little bit. Just isolate those. Just remember, because we, we haven't really got anything under there, they're quite hollow. Bring it 
if I need to go to that. Right. Cool. So, a bit sharp still, but once we let's go back and do that rib cage. Cool. Once we go across, draw. Let's draw some muscles back. Then we've got some artists around here, some lats. Um, zero measure. Set nice and stone. Cool. And then the chest comes out a little bit wider. There we go. So that's basic anatomy of a person. We've got to now do feet and hands. So for feet, we're going to just start with the shape. We're going to dress up the shoes in the next video. For the hands, we're going to do that as well. We're going to actually, no, we'll do the hands in a closed fist, sorry, and we'll do a head. So I've already done this once. So here we go is my base human. I, I made this before I did this recording. So we're going to do closed fists like this and then a generic head. This head, I can't remember, probably would have taken five, 10 minutes. We're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to have both of these scenes, I'll say this again at the end of the video, both of these scenes on the Google Drive, just so that you guys have a head start. I understand sculpting a head and hands are a little bit tricky and you might want to get on with the rest of the steps, but don't want to have the head and the stuff holding you back. So I'm going to drop these up there for you to use in the meantime, though I reckon it's worth learning to sculpt. I didn't do this with any reference material, um, probably can tell that by the ears. This was just um, off the top of my head what I'd come up with, and that's what I'm going to do right now. So we're going to go back to this one here. Right. I wonder what, if there's much of a difference between the two, because no, they're kind of similar. Just two different types of people. Actually, I think I'm not sure which one I prefer. But anyway, so now. Let's come up. No, okay. Let's insert polysphere. Um, in the world, I don't know why. Oh, this is our polysphere from earlier, but that doesn't matter. This was the one we were drawing on earlier when we were explaining the brushes. So let's get that kind of in the center. Mirror world. All right. Anyway, I'm not sure why that's struggling to be in the center, but that's okay. So we're going to make our head out of this. This is where we're going to start to lose this reference material because that's not going to help us make the head. Our head needs to come to the top of this 30 millimeter figure. So while I'm sculpting this, I'll talk a little bit about proportions. So a normal human head is meant to make up about a seventh of the person, if I, if I recall. We, I like to bring my shoulder lines of my models up to the 25 millimeter mark on a T-pose, and then the head makes up the last five millimeters. This makes the head just a little bit bigger than the model. And it's just kind of my rule of thumb that from kind of from the chin to the top of the head is five mil. So the eyes sit at about the 28 millimeter mark. And that's kind of something that um, you find in most models. But again, bring this, when once you bring it to your slicer, you can rescale this. But for now, let's just stick with this, this rule. It's just easier to follow being a sixth of the height. So first things first, we need to bring, let's look at the one I've done earlier. So the head has a bit of a neck. This neck goes into the torso and we can spin the head around and pose it later on. I sometimes keep the head separate, sometimes attach them, really. The reason that I would have a head attached to a model as opposed to not depends on the hair because if the hair has to flow over the back of the um, figure, it's hard to make that modular. So that if it's got a helmet, I normally make the helmet separate so that there's just more versatility. So we're going to start and do the same thing. So hold shift, click, isolate this. Now this might not actually be in the right spot. We're going to come and add this later on. Oh, symmetry on, just mirror and world. Sorry, let's make this bottom. All right, so we need some more resolution. Cool, there we go. So this is the neck. So let's get some, some chin. It's kind of already got the shape of the head, doesn't it? That's kind of the kind of profile. Um, 
All right, so holding alt, a bit of a jawline. Yeah, eyes are going to be in there. Cool. So going to add a nose. I don't have a method for doing this that I follow every time. I kind of make it up as we go. And it's, I, that's just, I think that's just the nature of sculpting. But if you remember the key rules, eyes in the middle of the head, that's always a good spot to start. Um, nose, let's bring it to there. Um, also, I think looking down at a face, remembering that the, sculpting the cheeks from the side, remembering that cheeks are kind of like flat from the side, from the side that's always handy but it's really going to be about pulling shapes out to make the shape of the nose make the shape of the eyes stuff like that humans have different eyes i generally get a um a, if i'm making a character's figure a actor in mind so i've used henry henry cavill before mel gibson um just if they played a role that just makes me think, ah, oh, this is who I would picture playing that. I generally kind of have that image on my second monitor and try and make it look like them. So, okay, so that's kind of the shape. Let's just draw in. The mouth is going to sit about here. All right, so I know it looks like nothing. That will change very shortly. So let's now up this um, resolution just a bit more than double and start drawing in some shapes. So with the damn standard, I'm going to actually make the brush a bit smaller and a bit more intense and draw in just some shapes like that. Now these are quite crude. Oh, okay, so we haven't done any eyes yet. So let's just put those in. Now some people like to do eyes as spheres and add them in separately. And, but I don't think there's much to gain from doing that, especially for us in miniatures, because we don't need to rig the face for posing. I think if we rig the face, we're going to be kind of sculpting it um, if we want to pose it to be something. Let's just smooth that back out. So the shape of the eyes and the nose are kind of what makes humans stand out. So... That's, again, that's why having an actor or any sort of reference image, oh, that's not what I say, if be a historical figure or someone you know or yourself or whatever it is, it just helps to make the person look real. And I think that's where most of them kind of fall short is that and the profile. Because from far away, it's the shape, the silhouette that makes something stand out. If you want to... Um, Dynamesh on the fly. I don't think I've mentioned it. So make you change, control and drag Dynameshes if there's no mask. If you've got a mask, it's going to get rid of it. So th this fella's kind of taken on, on a look of someone with really sunken cheekbones. I kind of think that's all right. I'm going to keep that. And yeah. Okay. So all right, we're about to up to the next re resolution again because I think I'm all. I think I've kind of gotten what I can get out of this resolution. But I don't think the nose is looking not big. But it just doesn't fit that face. I wouldn't like to be this person. Let's drop that back. No. Yeah. No, it's okay, it's, it's the bits at the side. Let's get those further in. Uh, and these lines need to run further behind the nose. Cool. All right. Otherwise, that's all right. So he's got kind of a funny a shape of his nose. Um, it's kind of a unique shape. I've kind of got two chins. So okay, that looks quite quite grim. But that was pretty quick. Let's do the ear before I forget. So here, I normally just draw a big C and then hold Alt, draw another C inside. 
and maybe stretch it down. I don't see many ears in my models because they're always wearing helmets or something. So those ears are very tall. Let's drop those. Cool. All right, let's talk about the shape of the head. Fixed. Mostly okay. So once I've got to this stage of a head, I'll again zero mesh. Let's see what resolution it gives us. With zero mesh, we've got it knows the poly count, so we can either do it half, same, or double, which is pretty clear, or a target poly count. Um, I think I might just take that to half instead of what we got, because I think what we got was a bit too basic. So drawing in these sharp lines is because I want the pol when it remeshes the polygons to run along those lines. So sometimes I go in and I draw sharp lines on the cheekbones where I want it to remesh, and we sometimes get a better result than others. So cool. Now I just quickly tap it a few times to smooth it. Now. Part of, when I sculpt, quite often it's like adding detail, smoothing it, and then refining it. So now let's go divide, divide, divide. Now that's very smooth and we can add a whole lot to this. So let's go in there. Oh, that's too much. Now let's start shaping the lips. So I want his top lip to just sit a little bit over his, the bottom lip like I had before. So I normally do a line across and then two lines down. If I want it, then I want it to come to the top lip. Sorry. So that's normally a line like this and then back down. That's not bad. So there's a little, got a little divot there. Same for the bottom lip, but a little bit weaker I might go. So the bottom lip, okay, I've drawn in the line but it's still kind of um, got all this material where I don't want it. And that's gonna come up again. So I'm gonna just quickly draw in a couple of little lines like this, where that's the case, where there's like material that I need to, start get, get, to get rid of. And that's where we're gonna start talking about sculpting and forms. So coming in like this and drawing lines isn't sculpting. And we're 3D printing an object to paint. So it's really important to have like clear sort of forms. Um, these eyes are looking very big, but it's gonna make it a lot easier to paint than if they were small. So drawing in these lines with the damn standard brush is not a final result. It's just to give us something to um, like, as a reference, because we're going to come in in a second with a different brush. Let me just move that back out and start to make some shapes. The head is probably what's going to take the longest. Um, so let's go in here. Let's drop this. So the clay build up is a very quick way to add material. In the same way, flatten flattens um, very fast. So this is going to get quite rough right now. And you might look at it and go, oh, hang on, we've just had such a smooth mesh. This is, is just to add material really fast, take it away and start making the forms and cheekbones. And there's a sort of aesthetic to it really, but that's, no, we want those cheeks to go back to being hollow. So this is where it will start to make the look of the, the character with the nose being a certain shape, lips, this is really fun when you get to doing creatures and orcs and stuff like that, doing the face, because you can really make them um, with like, like really sharp lines and all really bony and stuff like that and really start to dig into the cheeks and stuff like that. But with a human, even that's a bit a bit sharp, but it just lets you, like you can just come up with so much character in a model doing it this way. So, I want his two chins. I'm not sure what jawline I want this fella to have. We'll kind of see what he, what he just takes. 
I think normally I normally start with a strong jawline and then t- get rid of it later. And same with cheekbones. I normally start with quite strong cheekbones, and then if I need to make it into something, or if I want to get rid of them, I'll get rid of them after the fact, just because when they're already there, it I, don't know, I think it just helps. Um, what well, just personally. So let's go back and add this lip in. I feel like that's the thing we've one of the things we've lost, but otherwise the rest of the face is taken shape. No, that's too much. There we go. There we go. Let's just leave it like that. Um, cool. I'm happy with the lower half of the face. Oh, I think the chin's a bit flat. Let's so back to the move tool. There we go. Let me just change that profile a bit. No, now it's too low. Now it's too high. Let's just tuck that back in. There we go. I built that. Let's drop that down to one now. Oh, it's on zero. Sorry. Put that at one. Here we go. All right. Now the temple. So, okay, and eyes, yeah. So, I want a, normally want a strong brow because when we're painting eyes, we normally go quite close to either a dark brown or a black, and then the white, black, and a white. The strong brow and the deep recesses just make putting the brush to do that white just a little bit easier. It, and normally we put a, a line kind of under this eye and like how we've got our um, eyelids i'm going to leave that on this model i think because there's a good chance this fellow's going to be wearing a helmet and we'll, i want the eyes to show up as much as possible and that's not something we're going to miss if we were going to do a character without a helmet then we'd go into a little bit more with the eyes but this is for 3d printing for a miniature not for an art piece okay so that's Kind of alright. Let's go into Accu Curve. Let's pull that down a little bit. I think they are a bit big. Alright, I'm happy enough with that face. I no, not sure how long it took. Okay, let's smooth that right down. Delete that. One. Okay, now I just want to Z rematch this um, a little bit and drop that polygon. But that's an alright face for the last five minutes. So, like I said, this face and the other face will be up on the Google Drive just to get you guys a head start. But I do encourage you to go make your own down the line. Okay, so once this is done, we're going to get onto the hands and I'll try and wrap this video up because we're approaching the 40 minute mark. But I guess that's, that's kind of what it's like. All right, any time now. There we go. That's looking all right. I'm sure that would paint nicely. So let's turn this back on. There we go. So I wonder how that, that head is. No, it's about the same size as the other one I've done. So now we want to get, let's get rid of the reference material, but keep the ruler. So yep, up to the um, 30 millimeters mark. That's the same as the other one. I think this one's probably a bit thicker around the neck than my one beforehand. So I might take that in, and I might take that up. All right, so let's quickly sculpt some hands, and then let's call it a night. Oh, feet as well. Okay, so insert poly mesh, shrink, drop. So by this stage, you probably worked out that sculpting these simple things is just inserting primitives and then putting them where they need to go. Sorry, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I wanna isolate this bottom calf muscle. I, I don't wanna see the bit on top because that's getting in the way. I wanna be able to look down at the feet. So if I go in here, control shift, select, I've hidden the top half, so I'm gonna um, select this, select the feet, and make that foot look like what it looks like when we look down. 
So big toe, bit of an arch. So we know that a foot comes down. There's a bit of a point at the heel. Feet are kind of symmetrical, from, uh, as in on the back side, more than they are at the front. So let's get that in there. Bit of an arch on the foot. So we're not going to add any detail because this is going to go straight into a shoe. If we wanted to add more detail, that's going to have to be it. That, that could be another video doing feet. I haven't actually done a foot that wasn't barefoot before, but it's no different than doing hands um, in the same way that there's knuckles and stuff. So again, mirror and welt. Those feet are a little bit pigeon toed. So I'm going to go in, turn on symmetry, just turn them out a little bit. Um, that's probably screwed up where they've joined with the other leg. So let's find the legs. Legs, show the rest of the legs. Merge down. Okay, the two are joined. Dynamesh, that's too low. There we go. So Dynamesh um, can take geometry from different meshes and join the two together. There we go, we've got two different feet. Um, very simple. So. Oh, but it's also joined our legs at the top. Let's just quickly. So if I go control, I can mask. If I go, if I'm not on the mesh, control, alt, I can mask in a box. Or actually, sorry, control, alt, sorry, is um, unmasking. Control is masking. But if you've got nothing masked, then it doesn't make a difference. But I just want to mask this middle, split mask, delete, just because I want to keep the legs separate. There we go, problem solved. Because we're going to split them up later. There we go, we've got our model. That head's shorter, that's what it is. Cool, hands, insert polysphere. So, we're going to do two fists. The reason we're going to do fists is because our first model is going to be holding something. So we're either going to be holding a um, shield or a sword or an axe or something like that. So let's make it roughly the size of a fist that looks proportionate to the cartoonish arm. So with a flat tool, flat, sorry, just tap it. Sort of tap it very lightly. We just kind of want it to be a box. Could have started with a cube actually. All right. Back face mask, pull it a bit wider. But yeah, pull it in. So we're doing the top of the hand is the important bit. So I'm just, before I take this to the next step, I'm just gonna draw in these lines so that we can see where the hand is running. This is, these are not final at all. So. All right, so we can see that that's going to become a fist at some point. So I reckon just look at your own, look at your, in my case, is the right fist. And we can see that the fingers run across, sorry, the top of the hand runs across, the fingers run down. So this is what we're talking about earlier, where I've got the different tools and subtools. I'm going to make this hand its own tool. So make poly mesh 3D. Now the hand is by itself, but it's not in the center of the mesh. So S pivot. It's now in the center. I'm going to get rid of the floor. I don't need it. And we're going to make this into a fist. So this fist is going to be holding something. So let's actually grab, insert cylinder. Just got to shrink that a bunch. Zoom out, shrink that a bunch. Shrink that a bunch. Cool. Now this one, let's go 90 degrees. This way, long, cool. So let's pretend he's holding this. That's might be. Let's make that smaller actually, because it's we can always make the hand reach bigger. So we've got the first set of digits, or first sorry, first sets of um, fingers, whatever the the longer one is called. Draw those in, and there'd be the second ones. And then 
the fingers would have the fingertips here. That's Dynamesh. No, that's Dynamesh with different resolution. Okay, draw in the fingertips and then the palm. So we're not going to worry about the thumb yet. So the palm is going to pull that down and not worry so much about what's inside that just yet. Pull those and make those a bit longer. So the fingers, the middle finger and the ring finger need to stick out a bit further. There we go. That's not so bad. Now, if this is facing from this side, so we need a thumb. So what I'm going to do is control mask extract this inflate button over here. We're just going to bring it up. Dynamesh just to get a basic shape and just pull that to where the thumb has got to be. So it's kind of in going to come across into here, like our, our own fist. There we go. All right, so divide. There we go. That's kind of where the thumb runs. Just going to double check that. And in here. There we go. All right, perfect. That's still a bit sharp, that angle. So I'm just going to point that out. There we go. All right, so we've got to unmask that. Merge down. So if I want to get rid of this tab here, it's showing up. Clicking that gets rid of it you can drag them across with this as well. But we don't want that. I think we just want to stick with the miniatures one at the moment. The Dynamesh, blur them all together. There we go, we've roughly got a hand. Let's get rid of this now and go, hold Alt, push in, Alt, push in. Let's not worry about this because we're gonna fill that with a band later. Just bring those fingers out. All right, add some creases in the fingers. Now I'm not going to worry about fingernails because this is, I think this model is going to be wearing gloves. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm also not going to worry about adding particularly much more detail to the hand for the moment because we've, we might make the grip bigger, things like that. But, and when we get to that point, that's when it's worth adding detail to the hand because as we pose fingers, and if we want to have pointing fingers or an open hand, we'll make that later. But just the close hand for now is going to be fine. So, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Let me just get through this autosave. Here we go. So now let's go in here, insert our sphere, sorry, our hand, and just put that where we want it. So let's get rid of this one. In there, cool, it's still facing more or less the right way. Okay, cool. Now, Let's lift that up and make this wrist kind of match a bit more. So if we want that to happen, back face mask, let's pull the back of the wrist out, pull the front of the wrist out. There we go. That's going to be fine for now. And of course, mirror and world. All right, so this is our mesh done. That did not take that long at all. That would have taken 30, 40 minutes and but once you've done the first T-pose, we can reuse this for everything. So every time I make a model, I don't know if I've got any of my others loaded. No, I don't. I start with the T-pose to start sculpting chain mail and armor and stuff like that on a T-pose of a figure. And I also use T-poses to pose models. So I make the basic poses running um, all this kind of stuff of the naked man. And then I take the clothes that I've already sculpted. I use sculpt in T-pose for the symmetry most of the time. Then I take those um, clothes and I fit them over the running person or whatever they're doing. And that's kind of the workflow that we're gonna be doing for this here. I haven't really done much of a collarbone, but we won't need that. So this is where we're gonna stop for tonight. And so the next video, we're going to talk about doing the basic clothing. So 
that's going to be things like uh, shoes and probably cloth. I, we'll, we'll see how far we get in the next video. Um, the idea with these were going to be short form videos of like 20 minutes, but I don't think that really works. I think sculpting needs to be like having you have it on in the background or in your sleep monitor while you do it. So I think these videos are going to be around the hour mark um, for what they cover. So one of the next videos is going to be chain mail at some point. So chain mail is going to involve making the shape of the of the chain mail shirt and then learning how nano meshes work. Belts, belt buckles, all of that kind of stuff, which really drive me mad just how many there are. We're going to talk about how to do those really quickly with insert meshes. Um, Actually, let me give you a bit of a teaser for how that works. Uh, preferences, Conti, um, restore custom UI. So my custom UI has a bit of extra stuff that we're going to make down the line. So when I do belt straps, I just draw them on. Um, same thing like this. This is an insert mesh, belt, arm buckle, things like that. Um, I've also got sort of details for doing things like belts. Um, I've got my sh uh, some some shields, just a couple of different things. Um, if I want to do a belt, sorry, this is always tricky. Some belts, I oh, hang on, let me just do that again. So this isn't this is just on the fly, not optimized. Um, belts with patterns on them. If that's how I was going to do that, that's an option. Th these are things we're going to talk about in the next few videos. I've got some fur brushes here. We'll talk about making fur brushes to um, sculpt fur. Actually, let me turn that intensity up. There we go. We'll talk about how to use those. Let's leave it there. Oh, it's clothing. No, it's got bricks in it. Not sure. All anyway, right, we'll leave it there. So, um, again, this series won't have all of the how to use this brush. I recommend there are people who cover talking about ZBrush a lot better than I ever could. And this model, this video is just a, was just about making our T-Pose and, and making the pieces separate and just the basics you need for that. I recommend go do some further reading on how to um, use some of the other features in ZBrush from people like Flip Normals. That's a good series on YouTube. Um, what I'm going to do in the next next video, and we're going to talk more about, is things like line weight for details, how thick and how thin to make details, um, because stuff like that is what separates like what we do from what they do when, as it comes to miniatures. Because uh, yeah, no, I'm going to, I'll save this for an, for another time. Anyway, um, if you made it this far to the end, thank you very much. Again, all of these stuff that we've made today are in a Google Drive for you to skip ahead to this point. Um, but again, go back and do it yourself when you're ready. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, see you in the next video.